Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial today and this is going to be a tutorial showing you how to make a volume slider and a volume slider which you can scroll the little slider bar, set the actual text over here based on the slider amount that you've set, press save and you can adjust the volume of your actual sound, press save, be able to mute it, put it higher and do other great great things like this. So I will say you can get all this from my Patreon, which is the Player Preferences Starter Kit, which includes commented scripts, all things for loading health levels. Be sure to follow along with this tutorial, let me know what you think, and we'll get straight into it. The videos have been struggling a little bit recently, so if everybody who watches it could just take an extra second just to like the video, it would really, really help me out massively, so thank you so, so much. So okay, we're in new scene now. What I want to do in my hierarchy is right click, go UI, create a new canvas. What we can do on the canvas is we can set the scale with screen height and we can set that to 1920 by 1080. We can right click on it again, choose UI and then choose slider. And you can see my slider in the middle of the screen. Then what we can do is we're going to create a UI and we're just going to call this text. And this is going to be our text box that we'll put in the center. I'll just scale the bounding box down slightly and put it center center. And I'm just going to set the text to white so you can see it. And I'm just going to put in the text box a zero. And then what we need to do is create a little save button. So we go right click on the canvas again, UI, and just choose button. And we can just put that next to the other two, just like so. It's a really, really fancy UI that we've got going on. But we want to be able to move this slider and affect that value we've got here, as well as do the save button, but we'll do that bit first. So we'll right click in the project panel, go create, and we'll choose C sharp. And we'll just call this volume save controller. And we'll open up in Visual Studio. What we'll do is we'll get rid of the two starting methods. And then we'll start by writing at the top, we'll use the using unity engine dot UI, which is going to use the actual UI collections that we need. Then what we'll do is we'll write square brackets, serialize field, private slider, because we want to access the slider and we'll call this volume slider, set it equal to null. Then we want another serialized field, private text this time, because we want to to update that text box and we'll call this volume text UI and set that also equal to null. We'll create a new method which will be public void and we'll call this just a volume slider with the capitals and just put flow volume in as a parameter because we're gonna when we move the slider we're going to just pass it into a value and then we'll say in here is volume text UI dot text. So this is accessing the text component of that text UI element we created. We'll set that equal to the volume, which is our parameter. Then we'll set it because that parameter is a float and we can't put a float into a text box. We have to convert it to a string. So we'll say to string and then in brackets and in quotes, we'll put zero dot zero, which will be a decimal placed value or a, a string, which is looks like a decimal placed value. So what we can do is we can minimize that. We can go back into Unity again. You can right click in the hierarchy, just press to create an empty game object. We'll set the transforms. We'll just call this volume save controller to make life easier for ourselves. And then we'll just add the script. It'll say be looking for the volume slider, which is there. And it'll be looking for the actual text which we want to update, so it's there. And what the last thing we need to do is we need to select our slider, go to the on value changed event and put a little plus. Then we need to add our audio controller into there. We will go to the no function, which will save the volume save controller and we'll click volume slider at the top because it will take that parameter that we want. Now, when we press play, it will take into account exactly what we've changed it will change that value so that's exactly what we wanted so now we need to do the actual saving so we'll go back into our script again and we're going to create the actual save button so we'll say public save volume a button with two brackets two curly brackets below and this time we'll create a local variable which is called volume value set that equal to the volume slider 
dot volume, but volume slider needs to be lowercase. So volume value is just local and we're just setting it to the value of the actual slider that we have. Then to do player preferences, so to do a simple basic save into a file, do player prefs dot set float and then we need to specify a name of the file so we can say this is uh, two capitals volume value or whatever you want that to be it could be game volume it could be whatever you want it to be and then we can set that equal to the volume value and then a semicolon on the end which will be that local variable there then what we can do is we'll need to be able to load the values so we'll just create or create an initial reference to the method that we're going to create which will be load values what we're going to do is create that method now so we'll just say down here, we'll say void load values with two brackets and then curly brackets below. We'll say that float, we'll say that volume value again, but now in this case is equal to player prefs dot get float and then we'll just give it the name of the actual file that we created which was a volume value with um, capital. So it's going to get that value that we saved which was the float value. Then we need to say that the volume slider dot value is equal to then the volume value. So the thing that we just saved out. But again, volume slider needs to be lowercase. Then to actually set the actual volume in the game, you could change audio sources or use mixers, but we're just gonna use the audio listener, which is the thing that affects every single sound in your game. So you can do audio listener dot volume is equal to then the volume value. So it's as easy as that. Then in a lot of cases, you can set a void start so as soon as your game starts you might want to load exactly what you've previously saved so if you haven't saved anything nothing would work but if you'd save values it would instantly load it as soon as the game starts so that's what you might want to do if somebody's previously saved what the volume should be in the previous past now go on to our button create a on click event by clicking the plus drag our audio controller onto there, set it to volume save controller, and then we'll set it to the save volume button, which will just do that exact code that we wanted. And then when we're here, we'll just grab an audio effect that I had. I'm just gonna drop it into my scene. I'm gonna set it as loop, loop and play on awake. We'll make it sure it's a 2D sound. And then when I press play, we'll have nothing in it at the moment, we can set it all the way to one. When we're in here, we can set it to half and it will do half volume. We can set it to zero to do nothing or we can set it to full to do full volume. But I've only got the volume very low in the background so we don't get our eardrums blasted out. So as I said, you can get the player preferences starter kit, which comes with all the commented code, everything that you need to get started with the player preferences. I will put on my Patreon the single script for editing volumes and doing with that. And if anybody wants to see any other tutorials related to this or similar, be sure to comment down in the comments and be sure to let me know what you think. If you've got one second of precious time, be sure to like the video because it would really, really help me out. So be sure to come and join me on Discord, check out my great assets on the Unity store. And thanks again for coming to watch the tutorials. So don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.